Hi everybody, Laura here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be a part of the Waffle Flower November release blog hop. And if you're a cat lover, then you are gonna love this new release. I have an adorable cat themed project to share with you. But speaking of cats, I wanted to introduce you to Frankie. This is Frankie. He's actually my son's cat and he was supposed to be on a flight back to Germany, but uh, he missed the flight because he was in the woods. See, here's the thing about cats. It's the cat's world and we're just living in it. So now Frankie lives here and we have Hank and Frank. Now, do they get along? Sometimes it's getting better, but we do love Frank. He is a cute little cat and he likes to go outside most of the time. And when he comes in, this is what he's doing. And he's not interested in anyone or anything, but he does like to beg for food. So stay tuned for a super fun cat themed project featuring the new November release with Waffle Flower. Okay, before we get into the project, I just wanted to show you some of these fun new November release products. These are the Sub Sentiments Cat and Dog. They're just pre-printed sentiments. I love that they're white on black. You can just trim them out and pop them on your projects. This is the perfect sentiment stamp set. It does have coordinating dies to go with it. I really love the mixture of fonts, like that handwritten scripty with the straight up. And then this is called Pet Thoughts. Just some great little sentiments that can go inside a speech bubble. And there's also a coordinating die for those speech bubbles um, that you can cut them out. Here is the Catitude stamp set. And then there's Catitude dies. So you can either stamp the silhouette of the cat or you can die cut. These work great together, but they also work great individually. And I'll show you that later in my project. Okay, here is the coordinating die to the pet thoughts. That's the speech bubble. This is the Simple Shelves Stencil Duo. It's a stencil set that adds detail to your bookshelf. And now here is the Simple Bookcase Die. These don't necessarily coordinate together, but I am going to use them together. Here's the star of the show for me, the inside pop-up shelves die, and then the shelf add-ons die. Um, I'm going to just shelf it up today, okay? This is going to be a really fun pop-up card. If you like to make pop-up cards, it's a little time-consuming, but every once in a while, it's fun to put some extra love on the inside of your card. So I have a half sheet of Hammer Mill white cardstock, five and a half by 11. This would be like you're making a card base, but you haven't scored it yet. Instead of scoring it, I'm going to line up this inside pop-up shelves die, and I'm using my grid mat to find the center, and that line that runs along the inside pop-up shelf that's going to score your car base or your panel what have you. you see here when I take it off so it kind of scores it and it makes all the cuts for your pop-up shelves and now here I'm taking a lot of extra time I'm going to blend color on each of these shelves to make them different colors I masked off around the side so that I could blend in only on each individual shelf this first one I use nutmeg positively saturated ink. And then on the second little skinny shelf, I used flannel, which is a very light gray. I'll have all the supplies that I use linked in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube. And then the final shelf up at the top, again, masked off around the sides. And I use the shade called Morning, which I've never used this color before, but it won't be the last time. It's a really cool purple like a cool gray purple and I loved it. I wasn't sure if that combination was gonna work, but I kind of dig it. And then now for the little books that were die cut into it, I just used Copic markers because it was so small and small little area. It seemed like the quickest and easiest way to add color to the books. And you know, if there's multiple books, I'm going in rainbow order. So uh, yeah, that's what I did. Now here's the fun part zhuzhing up your shelves. I used the shelf add-ons die and die cut a few accessories to adorn the shelf. So I did a plant. I'm using all just solid color cardstock, an array of different colors, kind of staying like pretty true to what would be in a home, like neutrals. Of course you could customize this any colors you want to do. Here's a little old fashioned alarm clock. And I love these, how they look, but you know what I can't stand? I can't stand a clock that ticks. I have to buy tickless clocks in my house. That sounds weird, but it's true. I can hear that ticking and it drives me bonkers. Okay, so I used some Barely Arts glue to glue all the little 
shelf accessories together. Now I'm pulling out the Catitude die set and I'm gonna die cut three cats. There are a ton of little cats to choose from, different positions and different directions. I just chose three that are gonna go on the bookshelves. And I used a little tape runner to adhere these to some scrap paper. And I'm gonna add a little ink blending. I'll do a mixture of ink blending and Copic marker to add color to these cats. Uh, you could have cut them out with solid color cardstock, but I just cut them out with white cardstock. And here I'm using some of these Waffle Flower little mini detail blender brushes. I'm using the one round size brush. Uh, okay, so then I take a little Copic marker to add some little stripes for like a tabby cat. And um, yeah, so now I'm adding glue to glue the accessories and the cats onto the shelf. You just wanna make sure when you glue your accessories and your cats that they're clear from where it's gonna be bending and folding. So just keep it off of those creases. Those score marks is what you wanna keep it clear from. So look at how cute these cats are, you know. And I know, since having Frankie around, they go and climb on and hang out anywhere they wanna go. Like I said in the intro, it's the cat's world. We're just living in it. And this one here is my favorite, this little cat that's laying down. He's laying down right there in the nook of the books. And he's probably looking at you like, what's your problem, right? Okay, so here I'm taking a ruler um, I've seen Nina do this in a video before when she's working in a pop-up. She kind of takes a ruler to bend those creases. There's no real easy way to do it. You just kind of got to get in there and kind of fold where those score marks are and work it until it folds flat. And it will fold flat and it is the coolest thing. The coolest thing. So then once I got it all worked in and ready to go, I cut another card base out of Hammer Mill. And I'm going to cover the back of the pop-up portion with tape runner. I just do one side at a time to make sure that I get everything straight because I have been known to put adhesive all over it and then you stick it in and you get it crooked and then you're stuck. Done that a time or two. Uh, okay, so tape runner on the other side, fold it over and now you have your inside pop-up portion. It's a little extra love, a little extra time, but I'm telling you, if you have somebody who loves cats, they're just gonna giggle. Okay, now for the front of the card, I'm using the simple bookcase die, and I die cut it into some very light kind of tan cardstock for like a light wooden book shelf. And then I'm using the Simple Shelves Stencil Duo, which doesn't necessarily coordinate with this particular die. There is another shelf die in the November release that coordinates perfectly with this stencil set, but I knew I could use it. You can use it manipulated to add some blended books to the shelf. You just gotta kind of figure out where you want your books to go and line it up with the shelves that are in this particular die cut. Okay, so again, using those one round brushes, also some of the big Waffle Flower bl blender brushes, positively saturated inks. And um, so it's a two-step stencil set, and it allows you to add a lot of fun colors to your books and also a few details. So your books are a little bit extra detailed, which is fun. And you know I'm trying to slip in as much color as I can, trying to make it colorful and happy because that's what just really lights my fire. Um, so yeah, Bo is missing Frankie. I think he really kept him company over there when he, he's living by himself in an apartment in Germany playing hockey and he really does love it. But he went to an animal shelter last year and I was so surprised when he said he brought home a cat. And then when he came home for the summer to visit, he brought the cat home. And I'll tell you what, that was a nightmare at first when Frank and Hank met each other. By the way, I have a question for you. I'd like your opinion. Do you think it's disrespectful if you name your pet after like a parent or a grandparent? Because Frank is actually my dad's name. And when I told my dad that Bo named his cat Frank, he was like, what? And I could tell, I don't know, he didn't necessarily love it. But here's the thing. Hank is my husband's father's name who has passed away. But when we got Hank, it was actually a birthday present for Emma, our youngest. And she, that's what she wanted so bad was a dog. So we got our dog. We picked up the dog and she had him in the back seat. And she's like, I know what I want to name him. I want to name him Henry after Papa Hank. You guys can call him Hank if you want, but I want to name him Henry. 
Well, how can you say no? How can you say no to that? Well, Hank stuck, of course, and then later when Bo got the cat, and he immediately wanted to name him Frank because it rhymed with Hank, Hank and Frank. And uh, sometimes I wonder, it's not like anybody said anything to me, but I'm always like, is that disrespectful? I don't know, but how can you tell a girl, a little girl, no, you can't name your dog after your grandpa? I don't know. Anywho, do you think it's, anyway. Okay, so I'm blending away, adding the books. There's some other things in the simple shelf stencil duo, not just books, like there's a lamp, there's like a little vase, a little, what do you call it? Like a little chest, um, treasure chest. What do you call those things? I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, adding all the things I, I made a purple lamp. Who would have thought I'd probably never have a purple lamp in my house, but Hey, I needed some extra color. Now I'm adding a sentiment from the Catitude stamp set. It fit perfectly right inside that one bookshelf and it says, you're the cat's meow. And then I put some of those waffle flower foam adhesive strips behind the bookshelf and I'm popping it up. You know why? Because dimension is life. And then I didn't show this, but I went ahead and die cut a few more cats from that Catitude die set. I colored them all different colors. Look at this little peekaboo door. I put the darkest cat in there. When I was growing up, I had a black cat named October. And if I, he would hide behind that shelf. He would love to hide behind that shelf and just scare the tar out of you. So um, now for the inside, I thought it'd be fun to do a little word bubble. One of the cats is going to be saying something. And this made me chuckle. So uh, I did the speech bubble first. And then it says, I'm secretly judging you. And if that ain't the attitude of a cat. I don't know what is. And I'm gluing it right down there on the bottom. The cat's laying down, probably cleaning himself, giving you the side eye. And he's like, I'm secretly judging you. So there you have this card. I'm not adding any embellishments because I've already put more love into this card than I ever do. But I love how it turned out. It's very happy and colorful. It's got the cat thing going on. I know so many people in my life who are cat lovers who would die for this card. Make sure and check out the rest of the November release blog hop with Waffle Flower. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.